Hello and welcome to the third session of the Biodiversity Information for Development workshop on biodiversity data mobilisation. This workshop is funded by the European Union and coordinated by the GBIF Secretariat. My name is Sharon Grant and I am the Technology Liaison to Science at the Field Museum in Chicago. I'm going to use a presentation to help me with this video and I'm going to start it now. This session will concentrate on the planning of your project, how to look at workflows and to organise yourselves, the people who will work with you, for you and around you. The session is structured in four parts. The first section, planning for mobilisation, we are going to be looking at the individual elements that you will need to account for in order to successfully move from the beginning to the end of your project. In the second session, clustering the components, we will look at ways to arrange these individual elements into feasible workflows. Lastly, in the third section, we will look at the elements of a good plan and how best to document it. To paraphrase Gandalf in the book The Hobbit, you don't need a mighty hero or even a warrior to kill a dragon. You just need to get on and make some plans. You may find some warriors to help fight your cause and a hero or two to help you sort out problems along the way, but you shouldn't rely on them. Knowing who the stalwart troopers and quietly reliable ones in your project are will help you finish on time, on target and within budget. So let's look at the term mobilisation in more detail and see what it means for us in terms of planning. The definition of the verb to mobilise is to bring resources to use to achieve a particular goal. There are three important parts to this definition. Resources, uses and goals. In other words, to mobilise something, whether it be an expedition to the Antarctic or the publication of data, you need to bring together available assets and use them to achieve something. Let's break this down into its elements. The first is resources. There are two types of resource the hardware that you will use to actually create the digital files and manipulate them, for example, the computers and cameras, lights and desks. Secondly, stakeholders. These are the actual people who will help you and work with you on your project. Which hardware you need is dependent on both the types of digitization being carried out, for example, herbarium sheets or pinned insects, as well as the combination of people who will do the digitization for you do not fall into the trap of buying equipment first. Specific hardware choices are unfortunately outside the scope of this presentation. However, a list of resources will be made available to you through the online learning platform. Stakeholders come in many types and can be organised into groups, teams or even be a single person. All of these will have some impact on the success of your mobilisation. They can be broken down broadly into three affiliations. Those people who work for the institution that is running the project, but who are not specifically paid by the project, will be called institutional stakeholders. Those people who work for the institution funding the project, but who are, who are specifically funded by the project, we will call those project stakeholders. Lastly, there will be people who do not work for the institution that is running the project, but who will be required to work for the project. These we will call external stakeholders. Stakeholders represent the who in your project. Each of these individuals is a real person who will have at least one role, and it is important to understand how these roles are distributed across the different stakeholder groups. These people will range from those working directly with the specimens and objects to technologists and, ex and include administrators. Identifying who will be involved in your project and understanding the jobs that they do will give you a good idea of who is best placed to help you carry out your plan. The second element of the definition is uses. These are the actual work tasks that will need to be carried out by the stakeholders in order for you to successfully accomplish your goals. Tasks represent which things you need to do. The set of tasks is largely dependent on the type of digitization that you need to do in order to create a publishable data set. 
However, they will most likely include some or all of the following. Specimen and object staging, curation, data review, database review, image capture, transcription, data cleaning, quality checking, georeferencing, and republishing. Remember that no one size fits all. There are, however, many existing repositories in digitization protocols available online, some of which will be included in the online course resources. These will be helpful to you in identifying the sets of tasks you will need to complete in order to finish your project. The third element of the definition is goals. Any project, small or large, will have the outputs articulated as part of the original project proposal and hopefully the project design will have been based in good practical sense. Examples of digitization goals are, of course, publishing data, but also the addition of extended metadata to specimen information, taking multiple images of the object or specimen, imaging all the specimens in a collection, georeferencing, and creating and maintaining your own IPT. Goals represent the what of your project. These are the stated and implied deliverables. Remember that other stakeholders may also have competing goals. For ease of planning, these goals should be simply stated and articulated and combined with deadlines which meet the funded proposal. Goals should be smart. They should be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant and time bound. Going back to our definition then, we can now see that resources refer both to people and physical assets like computers. Individuals can have more than one role and are associated with stakeholder groups, which in turn have affiliations. Use refers to the tasks that we carried out by the individuals holding a particular role. And goals are the smart outcomes that you need to achieve. Using the criteria that we just discussed to assess the environment that you are currently working on is important because much may have changed since the original submission. You should review your goals. Do you know exactly what you need to do and when? Research uses similar to yours. Has anyone in the community done a similar project? Lastly, review your resources. Start with the people. Who do you actually have to help you? Then see what equipment is already available. You are now in a position to assess realistically where the gaps, bottlenecks and barriers in your project may be. One way to do this is to take your list of stakeholders associate roles to them and then assign tasks to each role. The tasks that you have decided you will need to be carried out can be assigned to roles. If any stakeholder or role seems to have too many tasks then this is likely to become a bottleneck in your project. Conversely, if there is no stakeholder or role in your current list to which a task should be assigned then you have identified a gap. Effective early assessment of resources should mitigate capacity and practical barriers, whilst identifying competing goals will help to avoid institutional and cultural barriers. To review, in this section, Planning for Mobilisation, we looked at the elements that it is necessary to understand before you can effectively organise your project. These were affiliations, stakeholders, roles, tasks, and goals. We also looked at ways to organise these in order to identify possible bottlenecks, gaps and barriers to successful data mobilisation.